AMD's upcoming GPUs might have a special trick up their sleeves. Also, there might be a special trick sleeve to getting cheaper motherboards from them. And you want the mid to lower tier 4060 and 4050? Maybe soon. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be getting into the hottest tech. Wow. I just automatically screwed it up from the very beginning. Uh, let me remind you that we're currently live streaming over on Twitch where we're giving away a PC sponsored by Asa Tech with the Ryzen 5800X plus 6800X T. If you wanna come on over and win it, all you have to do is come watch us over on Twitch. Anyways, well, but you know, the 6800X T is fine and all, but what, what if it was faster? What if it was so much faster and so much better like a 5800X 3D is because it has 3D V-Cache? Well, it's being found out after people are digging in with a microscope to AMD's GPUs. They're finding out that, hey, there are sections on here for 3D V-Cache. So this is coming out from an engineer who's taken a peek inside the 7900X T's die and found that there's a linear array of spots that look remarkably like the keep out zones on X3D and that are on the same 17 to 18 micrometer pitch could they be considering stacked mcd functionality or maybe there's something else so this whipping up a frenzy of people being like yes 3d v cache on the graphics cards however if you look in the re replies it does seem to be that amd has at least initially said that they've talked about doing stack mcds but have chosen not to do it at least initially it could potentially come in future iterations and that might be what the keep out zones situation is for but 3d v cache could allow for unlocked gaming potential on something like a 7900 XTX 3D. Oh man, could you imagine one made by like XFX and they call it like their triple X edition? So many X's just floating around from AMD for the graphics card. That's gonna be a wild situation, but potentially unlock a lot of gaming performance that might be accessible without having to tremendously increase power draw. And the only issue that you would really see with that is trying to keep it cool like we do have with the 5800X 3D running a little bit hotter than the current 5800X. But it's also similar to what AMD already has set up with their Infinity Cache on their GPUs, which allows them to get a little bit extra performance for less memory oomph than they otherwise see. So we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. But this being baked in at the die level makes it at least somewhat a little bit cool. Maybe that's the, you know, the 6950 XT replacement for the 7900 XTX is the 7950 XTX X 3D. And then it can compete with the 4090 or the 4090 Ti potentially, and then put the fire to Nvidia shoes. There's a, there's a lot of speculation going on in this, but it could be a game changer for AMD, especially if you, uh, if you look at what it's done for their CPU departments. No release dates, nothing like that, but it's there. We just have to wait for it, like AMD's drivers. Yeah, <laughs> but you don't have to wait for today's video sponsor. My friend, size matters here on Hot News and for today's video sponsor, Morgan & Morgan, because when you're choosing a law firm, size matters. Morgan & Morgan has more than 800 attorneys across 49 different states and over 4,000 support staff ready to take your call 24 seven. And they've recovered more than $13 billion for hundreds of thousands of clients. And the best part is you pay nothing upfront for their services. The fee is free unless they win and getting started is easy. You just dial pound law from your cell phone or for your youngins. I probably shouldn't say this because it's a very boomer thing. Hashtag law or visit for the people.com. Big thanks to Morgan and Morgan for sponsoring today's video. And remember my friends, size matters. But it's not just their future GPUs that are looking good. It's also now GPUs because Acer is allegedly going to be getting into making AMD GPUs. We saw EVGA left Nvidia and we've been waiting to find out who's gonna fill that void. Meanwhile, AMD is getting partners joining them. Acer being known for making an Intel GPU at the moment with their Bifrost GPU. They're gonna be bringing out some 7900 series GPUs. It remains to be seen which ones or how they're gonna look, but another partner getting involved in that. And you wanna talk about some more good AMD stuff because we've had a series of negative AMD takes as of the last few weeks, especially with them being so poor at communication. One of the things that they have been poor at communication about is their cheaper motherboards for the Ryzen 7000 series. And that's namely, at least in the comments of everything that I read from you guys, the main reason why you're not upgrading to the latest AMD generations. Turns out that uh, there might actually be more than one cheap motherboard coming because there's reports coming out that there's a promontory 21 module, which is currently what is being used on the B650 and X670. But then there's allegedly another promontory 22 chipset, which could, uh, 
either make it cheaper or more expensive. It's hard to say which one's gonna come first, but it could be two different iterations of the A620 chipset, which could hopefully meet the price target that AMD set for their latest motherboards of $125, because they sure as heck ain't hitting that with B650. I would love to see it happen. Give us more cheap motherboards, AMD, and Reese, give us the cheap, UFD deals. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals, we bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I can't believe we're a month into the year already, but I, I guess we've got to deal with, I'm sorry. Onto the deals. We have the Govi DreamView TV light strips with the downward facing camera that actually matches the lights to whatever you're watching on TV. This 10 foot version has you covered for TV sizes up to 65 inches and at only $49.99, it is $30 off. I love Govi lights. I actually have some lighting up the desk. You can see the lights spilling up onto the monitor there. But secondly, another thing I love is this Asus Z590 Wi-Fi Gundam edition. Anyone who knows me knows I have a thing with Gundams. This Intel LGA 1200 socket ATX motherboard is going for only $15899, which is $90 off or the lowest price in 30 days. And with that, the deals are done. I'm gonna hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Reese, you know what to make this UFD deal? exchange faster as if we both had five gigabit ethernet, which is something Frontier is looking to roll out in the United States at the current moment. Frontier is saying that they've rolled it out across their entire network and that is not gonna be a phase rollout. It's just, it's here. You want five gig fiber, it's available. It's gonna be super fast and it's only gonna cost $155 a month, which for what I was paying for cable internet in Florida, this would have been a revelation to me. I can't get this because it's not available near me. I am curious for anybody who has used Frontier, what do you think of it? Is it good for you? Have you enjoyed it? I Hopefully we get multi-gig fiber rolling out in many different places as the years progress because one gig's great, but more gigs would be better. And that's what you say about nothing and their phones. More nothing phones would be better. The Nothing Phone 2 getting announced that it's gonna be released in the United States, officially launching, and that it's gonna be more premium than the Nothing Phone 1, which saw an impressive debut. So in case that ruffles your jimmies, you're gonna be able to pick one of those up hopefully sometime later this year. And if you've been eyeing an EV, something like the Ford Mustang Mach-E, well, the price drop just hit that for 5,900 bucks. That's gonna be dropping it down for the regular version and the extended range battery version is gonna be dropping by about 19%. This is to help them stay within the competitive territory with Tesla, who just recently dropped at the price of their electric vehicles by several thousands of dollars. And now also keeping them in line with the federal tax credits that are available until March. Speaking of things that go speed with electricity, like an electric vehicle, really had to work for that one. Russia's native homegrown CPUs are getting benchmarked because obviously with everything that's been going on in that landscape, it's been difficult for them to get their hands on American made chips and they've been developing their own. This is not the first one, but it's actually coming out on YouTube where there's a review of the Elbrus 8SV on the TSMC 28 nanometer node has eight cores, 1.5 gigahertz, and it's capable of playing Morrowind between 30 and 200 FPS. Also Stalker, it can run between 10 and 20 FPS. It, it, can, it, can, uh, it can run some video games somewhat with an RX 580. The RX 580, oh, that's not supported by video games anymore. It's great, it's good stuff. Speaking of not having support, if your GPU goes up in flames, who are you gonna call? Well, it turns out that if we look at a Swedish retailer, they've reported on not only which graphics cards and motherboards have been the ones with the most return to manufacturer, but also the process time with which they've been able to get those returns processed, which is more intriguing to me, especially because they've only had 300 GPUs that have been sold and returned under warranty. So the sample size isn't quite large, Large, but the thing that I'm really interested in is the warranty case duration that you find with GPU manufacturers. And what you find out is that uh, Sapphire is the number one with three days and Gigabyte's the worst at 18 days. And there's not enough data on a few of the other ones when it comes to graphics cards, when it comes to motherboards. Biostar was the, the average at zero days. The worst at, for their reports was ASRock with 13 days. Obviously this can vary greatly due to region, what country you're in, different laws that are applicable to the consumer, as well as several other things. But it's good, intriguing information to see. How does this line up with your experience? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments while I let you know and get your experience on the mid-tier GPUs. I'm tired, my segues are garbage today. I'm so sorry about that. But in case you're looking forward to an RTX 4060 and 4050, which 
Likely going to be very expensive. Let's just be honest. Not going to be uh, affordable, as it were. But according to reports, uh, they might be coming out sooner than you think because there's an EEC listing for these as well as the details coming out from Shanky Group actually adding these to their model listings, which typically happen closer to launch. And despite the fact that we haven't seen any really deep rumors or leaks happening around these GPUs, it seems like they might be coming out sooner than we expect. Maybe because NVIDIA is not seeing as good of sales as they would want. Maybe it's not true and they're actually going to be coming out later on. Or maybe I just am disillusioned and jaded by the entire GPU industry in the last good mid-tier setup chips that we got in the 580 and 1060 just have never been replicated and I sit here wishing that they would someday but probably will likely never and I'll likely never stop doing hot news this is, this is my life now see you back here tomorrow friends for February we've already been through the first month of this year Woo!